Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give the latest update on the tropics. I have a lot of good news all around, even for the U.S. For all this heavy flooding coming, I have some good news for you as well. And there is, unfortunately, some bad news with that. We are going to have a big surge of heat on this next pattern we're having. Plus a big flow all the way to the upper Midwest with a lot of severe weather that's going to start popping off. Mostly damaging winds and large hail is going to be coming out of that so far from National Weather Service. We will get a lot more information on that as we get closer, but I will show you what I have. And I will put timestamps in the description so you can see between the two of what is going on for what you come here to see. Thank you so much for your time. But I have to start off in the tropics because they have people asking me, when is this coming to the Gulf? When is this going to be a hurricane for the U.S.? Could he have someone out there saying that this is coming towards the U.S.? And if this one don't come towards the U.S., we're going to have hurricanes coming towards the U.S. very soon. And I don't see that as true. Matter of fact, I have new information on favorable, unfavorable environment, what pattern we are going into. So as you can see for this morning, if you can't see it, let me zoom in a little bit better for you. We have some great news. As you can see the newest update, it will still become a hurricane well before it reaches the Lesser Antilles and it does weaken back down. Matter of fact, it has it right before landfall weakening back down towards a tropical storm and it's not strengthening back up. So as of this morning, Tropical Storm Brett, which will be Hurricane Brett, right now it is at max winds at 40 miles per hour. It is moving west at 17 miles per hour, so it has slowed down a little bit. It was at 20, but the max wind gust is at 52 miles per hour, 1,008 millibars. Plus, we have Invest 93L over here. And right now, it is at 15 miles per hour moving to the west. Max winds is 29 miles per hour, 1,011 millibars. So a little bit stronger, and it will become shortly a tropical depression. So let me give you all the latest information. You can see the track guidance on where... Brett is going and you can see the track guidance on where Invest 93L is going as well still showing that is not any threat to anyone so remember I do have links in the description for you if you're in the Lesser Antilles, Leeward and the Windward Islands because there could be multiple impacts and I will show you exactly what you have as far as your rainfall your wind gusts your wave height that is coming your way that will bring you a lot of waves and a lot of storm surge as well and it is zoomable all the way towards whichever island you are on but you can see also for brett for this morning that it's looking very discombobulated it's just really messed up this morning and i see that as it strengthens up to a hurricane it is going to weaken down very quickly because it's being lopsided guys it's getting hit with a lot of this caribbean shear if you remember my other update that i showed you that the caribbean shear is well above average we do have a nasty trough coming through and that would block anything from coming towards the u.s anyway so let me show you all the latest information so so far the latest information as of this morning from national hurricane center invest 93l is at 80 percent and environmental conditions also appear conducive for further development of the system and a tropical depression will likely form during the next couple of days while it moves westward at 10 to 15 miles per hour at the same time you can see that with all the shear that's going on once it starts reaching towards the lesser antilles it starts weakening down considerably maybe even going down to a tropical depression instead of a tropical storm maybe even just a tropical wave as it passes right over the lesser antilles and then starts getting a lot more shear on it and it just weakens down greatly you can also see as it gets closer that not only the dry air but all that shear is pushing all of its precipitation off the center and it's not able to strengthen it is literally just leaving it behind at the lower levels and on the upper levels is just getting sheared dramatically as it gets closer and closer towards the lesser Antilles. Still bringing some rainfall and some winds, but it has gone down dramatically. And you can see also for Invest 93L that it's also having issues and it's just going to go head north and no threat to anyone. Now you can see the update with National Hurricane Center that in 48 hours, it will become Hurricane Brett. But literally 24 hours later from all this shear hitting it, that it will drop down to Tropical Storm Brett as it reaches the Lesser Antilles. And then it's just going to start weakening even more after that. I believe it will start going down towards a Tropical Depression. I believe it will be updated again. However, the timing of these impacts are still the same from yesterday. And it is a big 12-hour difference so you can see the earliest time is still by thursday 8 a.m reaching the lesser antilles 
passing by Puerto Rico by Friday at 8 a.m. And you see also more than likely it will be 12 hours later where it will be p.m. instead of a.m. as it reaches the Lesser Antilles. And you can see this as well as it becomes a tropical storm. There still is going to be a hurricane, probably a low great hurricane I mean, right on the edge then it becomes a tropical storm by 2 a.m on friday remember this could be sooner as it reaches lesser antilles and it starts to keep going into the caribbean as a tropical storm and i believe maybe it'll stay a tropical storm right here on the eastern caribbean but i believe it will downgrade right here by 2 a.m on sunday to a depression if not sooner and you can see how much more it has downgraded. So your chances of getting a tropical storm force wind, sustained winds for at least 39 miles per hour. You can see that now you don't even have the 40 to 50% chance going into the Lesser Antilles is dropped greatly. Now you have a 30 to a 40% chance or less of getting at least 39 miles per hour sustained winds. And 50 knot winds, almost 60 miles per hour. You can see how much it has dropped dramatically. It has gone down to maybe five to 10% in that dark green and 10 to 20% in this light green, very low chance of getting the high winds of 60 miles per hour. And your chances of hurricane force winds is only five to 10%. So any fish out there, beware this little area right here, you could see some high winds. Now I will still do an afternoon update on the tropics just so you're gonna stay updated with the newest information is and what your impacts can be. But you can see also all of them are green on this western push. So just like I said yesterday, take each wharf with a grain of salt. We have to know all the factors, but now it's looking like the outlier. H wharf is really good on the path, but as far as intensity, it's kind of like GFS. It overdoes it a little bit, and now it's all by itself. You can also see on the intensity guidance that it has a very low chance of even being a low grade hurricane when it does become a hurricane. Most of our green, it will be a tropical storm as it swings on and that's about as strong as it's going to get. That's why I said I could see this downgrading again to a tropical storm, then a tropical depression. So I will update you in the afternoon update. I believe that is what we're going to start seeing. Now you can also see this on the ensemble. So just looking right here, you control member, which is your more than likely outcome. You can see as it moves through, it does strengthen a little bit, but then it drops down dramatically. So I do believe we'll see an update for possible tropical depression. And you see Invest 93L does weaken down dramatically and goes to the north. However, just like I said yesterday, as we get these two strong tropical waves going into the Eastern Pacific, there is a chance with a few of the ensembles where this could strengthen up and maybe get into our Gulf. Now I see this as not really a possibility because with the new information I see, instead of favorable environment, we're going into a neutral phase, guys. So it will not be a strengthening factor. Even the control member is showing it'll just be a tropical wave, possibly getting into the Bay of Campeche as you go through July, very beginning the second and the third, and that is about it. And you can see the latest information on the potential velocity anomaly. So we do have that favorable environment, even though it's getting sheer, that's why it's still ramping up as it moves to the west. But as you can see, as it goes into the Caribbean, it still has unfavorable environment. So it is hitting all that shear, it will not last, guys. But you can see after that, we still have favorable environment, mostly looking like maybe the, the southern half of Bay of Campeche, maybe the western gulf before it goes towards Mexico, more than likely going to be in that eastern Pacific area. While the rest of the Gulf, the Caribbean, and moving towards the MDR is going to be in a neutral phase, a very weak phase. It's not really favorable, but it's not really unfavorable as well. And we still have something strong coming off the MDR in the beginning of July. But you can also see that it is starting to spread out as we move through July. And you can see this on the latest information. This has just come out this morning, guys. So as we go through June 24th, you just have a little bit of favorable environment. That is it. And we're staying in a neutral phase. And you can see as you follow through, we stay in that neutral phase. But then as we go through the beginning of July, there is favorable environment in the Eastern Pacific and a little bit for the Western Gulf, maybe the Bay of Campeche while the rest of the Caribbean is just in a neutral phase. And you see how it does spread out a little bit as we go through the beginning of July. So I will keep you updated because from the 5th on, we're the greatest potential chance for something to form. But you see after this, it starts going from July 14th and then it goes towards Central America with our favorable environment. And we stay in that neutral phase once again. And that hangs through July. So you can also see from here from the big shot that all this favorable environment is weakening down 
as we get closer and closer towards the middle and towards the end of July. And you can see this here. So as you go towards the end of June, you do get something very strong in the Eastern Pacific. And take this with a grain of salt. It does show something could form somewhere out into the Atlantic, maybe become something that could be close to home. Guys, this is past 10 days. Take that with a grain of salt. Also take this with a grain of salt. It is showing that maybe that wave could get into the southern half of the Bay of Campeche, move western in the Gulf, and something very, very weak because we're not going to be in a lot of favorable environment. All the favorable environment is going to start coming as we go from the 3rd and the 4th and beyond in July. But I will keep you updated because you can see the update with GFS on the 60th this morning that it is showing as we go towards the end of June. Not only is that surface low in the Atlantic not going to be there, you see these are more likely going to grow into the eastern Pacific because that is where our favorable environment will be. We will be in a neutral phase and then going through the beginning of July, that's when we start getting our favorable environment. So I am still showing that you have another one possibly coming to the Caribbean as we go through the beginning of July. You can see here on your precipital water, also for the U.S., as you still get all these storms coming across towards the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic, I have some good news for y'all as well. Still showing a lot of heavy rainfall, but it's not showing extreme. Just like I showed you yesterday, as it starts pulling up, you can see that all the heavy precipitation is still breaking off and pushing to the west. That is not coming towards the U.S. making this so extreme. It's still going to be problems, still going to be flash flooding. Matter of fact, there is a moderate level for today. But just like yesterday, none of that is coming towards the U.S. That is all pushing to the west. And you can see in the update that all that precipitation is not favored to go into the Bay of Campeche or the Gulf of Mexico. It will favor pushing more to the west. Could bring some more rainfall, a lot of tropical moisture. But it's still showing that that tropical wave around July 2nd and July 3rd will still be headed towards the Caribbean. So we'll keep you updated on that, possibly two of them. So you can see exactly who could be possibly impacted from Tropical Storm, maybe even Tropical Depression, Brett. I will update you this afternoon. But you see your cone, it goes all the way towards Granada, all the way past Dominica. But if you zoom in a little bit, you can see exactly who could be impacted. Now the GFS is still showing that it will be northern, north side loaded, which is more likely the outcome. That's usually what happens. It gets north side loaded when it comes off the MDR. Euro is still showing because of that weakening that it could be towards, instead of the leeward, it could be towards the windward islands. So if you're in this cone area, you need to be aware of still some possible rain, winds, and waves coming your way as it starts coming towards you. And you see after it passes by the Lesser Antilles, it does still move towards Dominican Republic and Haiti, but it is favoring after this that it's gonna start making that Southern push. It's not any threat still towards Jamaica. So as far as your impacts go, remember this link is in the description for all of you. So all you gotta do is zoom all the way into your area and see exactly what your potential is. Get the best information you can. Instead of just saying the island, you can see which town on the island. So, so far, Euro is showing that it could be some 40, maybe up to 50 miles per hour wind gusts as it goes by Fort de France towards Rosu. It's been showing that for a while. GFS is still taking this where it's going to be a little bit more northern and a little bit slower. So, in three days, you can start feeling it. And then in five days, that's when it's going to start pushing over the Lesser Antilles. So, Euro is still taking it a lot faster. Still showing a hit point right over Portsmouth all the way across Rozu, We are, could be getting up to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. And it could go a little bit further to the north. But if you notice, if you go all the way up to like towards St. John's, now you're talking 30s. Also with your rainfall amounts. So literally within three days, you literally have 72 hours when this is going to happen. You see, according to the Euro, it's only bringing y'all three to five days. It's bringing y'all half an inch. Some of y'all might get an inch of rainfall. And for some of y'all, this is going to be beneficial because y'all are a little lower than normal. But you see, it goes all the way towards Trinidad and Tobago with maybe an inch. It goes towards St. George's with the heaviest. St. George's, Kingstown, all the way up Bridgetown as well all the way up towards Rosu and Fort de France with maybe an inch, maybe two inches. Now that's according to the Euro. GFS is taking this impacts more northern, where it's going to be maybe Rosu. So Rosu, Fort de France, it's been impacting, showing y'all as the hot spot for who's going to get the heaviest rainfall. 
but still showing that you do have some waves coming as well. Remember, this link is in the description, so you can go check it out for yourself. So as you go through Thursday, that's when your waves are going to start moving in. First, let's check with the Euro, then we'll check with the GFS. So all the way from St. John's, you're going to be seeing anywhere from 8 to 10 feet, all the way down towards Kingstown, where it's going to start lessening up. But you can see as this wave moves through for, for Thursday, it does go towards Fort de France, towards Rosu as your biggest impacts on these waves. So it will be bringing some surge for y'all as well. So please be aware of that. Anywhere from 13 to 14 foot waves could be passing over you as you go through Thursday night and pass over quickly and be gone by Friday around noontime. And that's according to the Euro. GFS, of course, took it a little bit slower. And by the time you go into Thursday evening, it still could be bringing y'all nine feet waves to the same areas, but a little bit further to the north now, where it could be hitting Rosu. So Rosu, Fort de France, has been showing y'all as the main impacts of all this. So as you go through Thursday night, through Friday morning, seems like you're worse so far. Still showing possible 16 feet for y'all, plus update on what's going on also for the U.S. So you can see you still have this low pressure, still bringing all this precipitation towards the East Coast. And remember, I have some good news for y'all, because you did see precipitation get cut off and go to the West in the Caribbean, while we still get this system that rolls on through through the northwest now this is going to bring some more severe weather we have outlooks for days ahead and it is going to go all the way up towards the upper midwest as well so there is still going to be a lot of storms a lot of rainfall still coming could have been a lot worse and we have these storms coming up through the northwest going through the upper midwest at the same time this high pressure is going to sit here and build and this is going to bring more extreme heat even further into our US. And you can see this shot here. So I know y'all dealing with a lot of heat. Believe me, I know how this is. I'm from the South. I was born and raised in New Orleans, raised also on the North Shore. So I know how it could be, especially with those that's out of power. Pretty miserable. Now you are gonna get a break from these very hot temperatures for quite some time as you go through Wednesday night through Thursday. But as that system comes on in, it's still bringing the cooler temperatures towards the West Coast while you get this surge of heat that starts coming all through the U.S. and it goes even deeper all the way through. This is going to bring a lot of strong heat indices to more than just Texas or Louisiana. So for today, as you look at your heat indices, you can see that your heat does build up. And as you go overnight, you do get them wind chills on the West Coast. For tomorrow, it's going to come back again, where you still get those wind chills on the West Coast. And soon this is going to change. You're going to start warming up as well. It's not going to last that long. But you see also as you go through Thursday, it's already calming down for Mississippi, for Louisiana. Unfortunately, you still have it for northern Mexico, for Texas. As you go through Friday, you're going to see it again. It's going to cool down for the deep south, south central still dealing with these hot heat indices. Now, as you go through Saturday, this is where this pattern is going to start stretching out. And your heat indices are going to go all the way towards Kansas now. And as you go through Sunday, it's going to stretch even again all the way towards southern Missouri. A lot of y'all going to be in these very strong, very hot heat indices. Also, as you go through Wednesday, this is going to be there again. As you go through Thursday, we go through another pattern and it starts raising up. And you can see this as you go through Friday. It starts bringing up them strong heat indices all the way up towards Iowa. So just the next 72 hours with National Weather Service all the way till Friday morning. He's already getting one and two inches all the way from Colorado all the way to the upper Midwest for the Dakotas, for Nebraska, even a little bit of eastern Montana and Wyoming get on it. But for the south, the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, it's going to be pretty heavy for y'all still. Not as heavy as it could have been, but it's still going to be a lot of flash flooding, a lot of heavy rainfall, and this you need to still prepare for. Showing it still will be one to two inches of rainfall coming as that system comes in with these storms. And as you go towards the southeast and mid-Atlantic, a lot of heavy rainfall coming towards New Orleans area, a little bit of southern Mississippi, all across Alabama from east side of it. Tennessee going across Carolinas and Virginia, Southern Maryland, and some of Southern Delaware getting on that in Southern Jersey, all the way across uh, the Florida Peninsula as well. Heavy rainfall next 72 hours, anywhere from two to four to maybe five inches. And a big hot spot for Northern Georgia, upstate South Carolina, all across North Carolina and Virginia as well, a big hot spot. So for today, you do have a chance for hail, you do have a chance for wind as well, and you have chances for tornadoes in the south and for the upper Midwest. Here's your cities and states at risk. 
for tomorrow. You have chances for hail and you have chances for wind as well. Now, as we go through Thursday, this is going to continue. As we go through Thursday, you have some severe weather. You have a 5%. As you go through Friday, you have a 15%, and we have a day 5, 15% as well because of the strengthening pattern we're going into. And for Saturday, here's your 15% as this moves further into the upper Midwest. So for today, while you, that's revolving around the southeast, you're going to get some storms moving across Florida, northern Florida. You also will get some for southern Mississippi going into Louisiana as well. So you do have some storms going on that will be severe. Your chances for tornadoes. And then it moves offshore as you go through 6 and 7 o'clock. A few come right back towards the West Bank as that moves a little bit later at night. Then it pops up for New Orleans again. And all this is going right over Florida for overnight and into tomorrow as all this just keeps building as we get these storms for the next few days we can also see as you go to later this afternoon you do get some cells moving through wyoming going to montana then it starts building up for the dakotas as you go later tonight and overnight potential chances for hail and damage and winds coming with that then as we go for tomorrow it starts building right back up for the upper midwest because of this pattern that we are in and you can see right there how that's just bowing out so much that is indicative to high winds pushing behind it and when i checked the 15 minute increments which is a little bit better high resolution from high resolution rapid refresh you see these winds really pick up as you go through 5 p.m not only new mexico also wyoming going through montana and towards the dakotas and the panhandle of texas 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts coming with that all even long you also see how it grows for louisiana and mississippi as you go through the evening 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts and it really gets strong all the way up to 70 80 maybe even 90 in the gulf of mexico so there could be some water spouts that starts going towards florida so please be aware of that but once again for today you can see how these winds rip right across florida bringing 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts and also for tomorrow it will start coming through as well all we can see is 15 minute increments. We only see all the way till 10 o'clock tonight. And it starts bringing those 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts along the west coast of Florida. So please be aware, I do believe y'all will see some strong water spouts, possible tornadoes. Now this hasn't officially posed at National Hurricane Center, say. But this model, this software does get information from the satellites just like everyone else. And you can see a possible update is coming to where there is no hurricane expected. All I'm seeing is tropical storm strength, guys. Now this could be easily a glitch as well, but let's take this as a possible insider information on what the next update could be. But most of all, thank you for your time. I appreciate every single one of y'all. We'll do a tropical update this afternoon. Just see what the updates are. Hopefully that is some insider information that you just seen and you've seen what the update possibly could be. So that would be great as well. So today I want to talk to you about having faith. God is control, guys. As everyone knows, God is the maker of everyone and everything, and he's always in control. So just have faith. There is some bad news with the heat surge and these storms coming, but there is so much great news coming out of this report today. I hope this really makes a big smile on your face because that is very good news. Now today I want to talk to you with Mark 11, 22 through 26. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Amen. Just remember, when you pray and you have something in your heart, because what goes in your mouth don't defile you. What comes out your mouth defiles you because what comes out your mouth is in your heart. So when you pray to God and you have anything coming in, in your heart, you have anything coming in your mind, clear it, dismiss it, get rid of it, forgive it. Then pray to God. 
Because if you don't forgive, he will not forgive you. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps you safe, always keeps all of us safe every day of our life until the day he comes and takes us home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Please share this information. Let everybody know what to expect. That there's no hurricanes coming through the Gulf anytime soon. I appreciate every single one of you.